Oh hey, welcome back to the Duck Hill Workshop. My name is Ben. And today, as I hinted at in the previous video, um, I have some suspicion that my table saw is not in perfect alignment. So today I'm going to show you how to check your table saw with a dial indicator or a dial gauge. There's a couple different ways. I have the um, I have the woodpecker's saw gauge, so I'm going to show you how to use that. <clears throat> we'll also talk about just how to read a dial gauge if you're not familiar with that. And then the other part that we have to have a conversation about is when we're doing this, when we are measuring the, the tolerances and the deflection in tools set up for woodworking, most of our tools that we're using, most of our, our measuring devices that we use to do this are capable of reading down to the thousandth of an inch. However, the material we're working with is capable of moving over an eighth of an inch or more seasonally. So there's a certain point where you hit your uh, uh, rate of diminishing returns or, or just where fussing over one or two thousandths of an inch isn't going to make any difference in your final product. <clears throat> so that's where we'll talk about how much of a range is acceptable, where in your uh, where in your projects you need to be really specific, very accurate with your your cutting and where it's okay to be a little loose. Um, so yeah, so we'll go right through that and talk about it. Anyways, here's, <clears throat> uh, I'll show you now how to set up your table saw to measure it. All right, so this is a dial indicator in case you're not familiar with what one of these looks like. There's a big gauge, has a set screw, and it's got this proby thing. Yep, most people are actually going to call this a probe. So, what happens is you attach this to whatever you want. This one happens to be a free one. I told you that I have the Woodpecker's uh, saw gauge. I do have that. This is also just a secondary one that I have. So, you can see as this moves, there are two dials going around and around and around. The big dial is what does your fine indication. Each of those lines, so if each indication here is a thousandth of an inch, each big marker is a hundredth, and each full rotation is a tenth of an inch. You'll see that this happens to have an inch of a travel because this little gauge, let's see if we can get close enough and yeah, let's get in there. That little gauge you see goes from zero to nine, technically 10. So if I go all the way in, you're going to see that go all the way around. And there's a little bit of extra play for calibration and alignment. But, yeah, right there. So, based on the position of our probe and the position of that needle, you know that there we've gone nine tenths of an inch. So, depending on the part you're measuring, that can be important. For the most part, we're just worried about with your table saw, and if you were suddenly measuring like deviations of greater than a tenth of an inch, like that would be, or greater than a hundredth of an inch, like that's, those are some pretty big deviations. The other thing you need to know is sometimes like the gauge will be set in a weird place. If you loosen this set screw, you can reposition your whole face. So depending on how you set up your gauge, it's mounted to a solid thing, and then you go and if it's mounted to a solid block or your, your miter fence or something, and then you set it against the blade of your saw, you know, suddenly you're here, you're not set at zero anymore. So now you can rotate that face to reset your zero if you feel the need to. You've also got some little indicators here that move around. So you can either set like, hey, this is an acceptable range, or this is where I started, and this is where I ended if you need to. So, all right, let's jump to the saw and I'll show you how this works. 
So right now this is set to measure arbor run out. So I'm gonna set that face back to zero, as close as I can to zero. I'm gonna hold on to this as tightly as I can. And then I'm just gonna turn uh, what you can't see, the probe's down here and it's resting on the flange of the arbor. You see as I start to rotate the arbor, there's a little bit of deflection, but really not much. This is telling me that there's less than a thousandth of an inch of run out in my arbor. That's pretty fantastic. You know, especially this is a budget model saw. All right, so now the next thing we have to do is I've made a test plate. This is just, what, quarter inch plywood, half inch plywood, Baltic birch plywood. Doesn't matter, you can make this out of anything as long as you can accurately mark your center line and then you'll mark where your, your gauge references from. Because even if this had a significant bow in it, as long as you're marking to the exact same point, uh, when you go front to back, your measurement should, the idea is that your measurement should be the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this on my arbor. Very carefully put this nut on because I don't wanna go fishing for it. Let me tell you how I know that, because I've done it more than once. So, now that that is in place, then we'll set the gauge up here. Uh, we'll do a little bit more in-depth look at how to do this, but basically you've got these two little pins, this big pin. You drop these two in your miter slot, and then this one comes in, it's got some, uh, it's stepped, so it will actually sit on top of those and the downward pressure forces them into the edges of your miter track and provides a steady. Now, the bottom of this has these little cuts, grooves. So we are going to set them up on the one that is, gets us in contact with the, with the wood. Now you'll see here there's a little bit of play. So right now you have to make the decision of whether or not you're gonna keep your pressure on the back side and keep the gauge up, or if you're gonna keep the pressure on the front side and rest the gauge down. I'm gonna try and keep my pressure on the back edge on this stainless steel pin so that it rides. And then I'm gonna set up my gauge so the probe touches that exact point. And if I actually remember right, I need to use this one on the saw, because this is as low as the setting can go. I'm gonna loosen this up. I'm going to adjust the face to zero, lock that in place. Well, before I lock it in place, I'm just kinda gonna tap the gauge a little bit to let make sure all the mechanism inside is settled. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this to the back, and I'm gonna keep up my, because I don't wanna lose contact with the board, and then I'm gonna go to the same position. Now this is telling me that I have three thousandths of an inch in deflection from my miter saw, my miter gauge, to my blade, essentially. So I'm three thousandths of an inch out of square. You have to decide, are you gonna fuss over trying to take out three thousandths of an inch? My answer in this case is, I don't think that that's the part that's causing any issue in my joinery. And if it is, three thousandths of an inch can easily be dealt with by a plane and a shooting board, and more accurately so than taking the time to try to line thousands of an inch adjustments to this tabletop. So I am not going to adjust the tabletop. The thing that I am gonna do though is, so this is only checking this miter gauge, I am also going to turn this around and check this miter gauge. So, okay, let's flip this around and check the other side. Why am I gonna check the other side, you ask? Because there's a possibility that the two, try not to hit your precision instruments, uh, that the two miter gauges are actually not parallel to each other, which is kind of an interesting reality. Damn it. Standby. 
So this is telling me that this side is actually slightly more in square than the other side. So this side with the left side was three thousandths of an inch out and the right side is two thousandths of an inch out. <clears throat> so that just points to, it goes to show that you'll probably never get both miter gauges perfectly square to your blade. And so basically the decision that you have to make is which miter gauge do you use most often? And sometimes that might be dependent on which gauge you can get square to your fence or to your blade. Now, what we need to do is measure our fence. And then I am just, my fence is locked down and I'm just gonna go ahead and, and right away I can see a lot of deflection where five thou all the way to the end. There we go. We're about five thou out of square. And that happens almost immediately. And the problem with that deflection is if we say we're at zero here and we're gaining five thousandth of an inch back here, it's okay to have a little bit of deflection in your in your fence. But what you want it to do is if this is your fence and this is your blade, right? That makes sense. <clears throat> you want your fence to deflect away from your blade so that it doesn't cause binding. So if it deflects towards your blade, it's gonna start pinching your piece of work stock or work piece against the blade. And even though we've got a splitter or riving knife installed, so that helps keep it from pushing into the blade. However, this might be worth trying to make the adjustment to either push it out to neutral or to push it a thou or two to the right. We're gonna look at that here in a second. So now we're looking at the back side of the fence and there's a set screw here and a set screw on the other side that matches it. And that's what when you lock down the fence, it puts pressure on these two points, which have a pad behind here and here on the singular front of the, the locking mechanism. So again, if I need to move the fence that way, it means that when this locks down, this side has to push the fence that way. So this needs to go in a turn. And this one needs to back up a turn. Half turns. I'm going to set that back down. Right. Oh, I've made a major adjustment because now we are one, two, we're like 25,000 out of square. So this is the danger you run into when you're making adjustments is that you, uh, you might just make it worse. All right guys, so that's the quick and dirty on how to measure, how to check your table saw for square uh, and your fence. If you needed to make adjustments to this particular saw, there is a back panel door that you take off with like nine machine screws. It's kind of a pain in the butt. And then there are four big machine screws that hold the 
uh, trunnions, the whole assembly for the motor, to the bottom of this table saw table. And <clears throat> from there, you just loosen. You decide which way you need to go. You loosen three of the four. Well, you loosen them all, but you loosen three more than the other one. You use one as a pivot, depending on how much you have to move. And then you just gently tap it, retighten, check for straightness. If you go one way or the other out, like you just keep doing that. I hope what you saw during this is that it's a process of small adjustments and rechecking. Small adjustment, recheck. Small adjustment, recheck. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that because I don't have to and I don't want to run the risk of screwing this up. Like both of my miter slots are within 3 thou. I'm okay with that, uh, that variation and we're going to leave it alone. Any, any issue that I have at that point, I can do more accurate truing if I make a, uh, a shooting board and use one of my planes to true up that edge. So that's actually probably what we're going to do next is we'll make a mitered shooting board to shoot these edges on my flag cases. Um, so yeah, there. If you have any questions, if you want to see something else that I didn't show or you feel like I should have shown, uh, leave a comment below. And if you want to see how to adjust these, I'm going to put a card here to Grizzly's. Grizzly has a, a video about how to make those adjustments. and. I'll let them show you how to do that and make the top adjustment. So, until next time.